everybody. It looks like we have a pretty good uh, starting attendance. I just wanted to give everybody a minute to, uh, you know, get get into the actual Zoom. Uh, we have a few stragglers. Um, I'm excited to see you guys. I hope you're excited to be here. Thanks for taking some time out of your weekend to come to a forward meeting. <laughs> So um, one, I know you guys have been working really, really hard, and we're going to talk about some of the achievements you have, but I really wanted to start it off with um, basically just going over a few really simple concepts. So let's start with advocacy. This is the idea. So a lot of you are in this stage right now. You are advocating for what Forward Party is, what we want to do, getting the word out to your friends and family on the street. Next comes organizing. This is where we're building power. Some of you are actually in this stage already, and some of us have actually been doing that for a while. So we've got a mixed batch in here in between continuously being advocates for the idea and the causes and starting to organize and build power locally. And this is gonna come into play later and it's incredibly important. The last step, which so many of us are eager to do, is to take action. That's where we actually mobilize the power that we've amassed using the ideas that we had and we start really taking action. So I just kind of wanted to go over those few things. Um, it'll make more sense as we go along. And I, again, am so excited to have you guys here. Welcome to the Ford Party meeting. So I wanted to start with just a few um, updates. So I wanted to make sure that we let you know in advance. We're going to send a follow-up email. Today, we're going to be going over a lot of different things that have links that will help you find the tools you need to be successful. But don't worry, you won't have to find them in the chat and save them. We're going to send them all to you after the meeting in a really simple format so you can be successful. So one thing I wanted to remind everybody for is our newsletter. Please make sure you're signed up. It's super simple. Go to forwardparty.com, sign up for our newsletter. And secretly, this actually helps us get party recognition some odd requests out there. <laughs> it goes out every Wednesday and it has calls to action, updates, things that are in the news, blog posts. It's actually really great. So please do make sure you're signed up for our newsletter. And speaking of in the news, there's some really great things going on, uh, especially in the world of ranked choice voting. The House did pass the Voter Choice Act and now it's up to the Senate. So if you have some spare time, call the Senate, <laughs> call your senators, let them know you want them to support this. There's already 50 jurisdictions using ranked choice voting for elections and 33 exclusively using the ranked choice voting system for federal elections, including Alaska and Maine. So shout out to all of you in Alaska and Maine uh, who helped make that happen already in the past. Um, speaking of shout outs, I wanted to say happy birthday to a few of our volunteers. If we missed you, I'm sorry, it's because your birthday is not in the volunteer portal. So go ahead and make sure when you're in there to update birthdays. That way we know we can tell you happy birthday. So we have Olivia, Eli, Rowan, Opal, David, Kale, hope I said that right, Jacob and Josh. Um, so next we're going to go to some volunteer action and some social media stats because you guys know we love the data. And I'm actually going to have Josh come on and talk to you guys about that. Hey, Blair, thanks. Hey, everybody. Um, again, thanks for, for joining today. We really appreciate you. And um, we're, we're just so glad that you're all here. So just wanted to go over some high level um, stats with you guys. Uh, we, we intend to try to share something like this in every meeting that we have. To get started, we're just going to start with some really high level stuff uh, for the past two months that, uh, that we've been up and running and had the volunteer, uh, volunteer portal going. So we have currently 3,541 um, verified volunteers uh, in the portal, but there are 15,000 plus uh, of us that have essentially said, we raised our hand and said, yes, we want to take some action. So we're following up with all of the people who have registered via email and trying to get them through that process of setting up their profile and getting used to the portal. For all of you, for all of you that have already done that, you know it's um, a little bit of a process to get it going. But the good news is, is that that's an average of 45 new people per day since we started, or 354 people per week. So, you know that's that's really good growth. And um, you know we're we're kind of in that early adopter phase. So just imagine once we start hitting exponential growth, and uh, all of the states start signing on. Within the volunteer portal, we have opportunities to take action. And it's really great that our opportunities, there are 54 of them total, and some of them are very specific and state-based, but with those 54 total opportunities, they have been interacted with over 6,000 times. 
81 times per day, 626 times per week. So you might feel like you're in the portal and you're doing an opportunity or you're taking an action and you're maybe you're just wondering, you know, who else is doing this? Am I alone? Am I part of a team? Well, on a national level, uh, we are we are getting a lot of interaction and um, Blair is going to be talking soon about how we're going to start to narrow that to state by state, region by region, to where you can understand how you and your team, your friends, your neighbors, your, your partners are really making a difference. So this month, um, our top opportunities uh, were the forward community organizer opportunity, um, which is essentially someone saying, I want to be a lead for my area. So we've had 16 people that have completed that, and we do have some other people that are in it. They just haven't fully completed it yet. Blair's going to talk a lot about um, community organizers uh, here in a minute. The second uh, top opportunity was voter reform orgs. That's essentially like a, a data collection type thing. What organizations are friendly to the causes that, that we at the Forward Party are trying to accomplish? Ranked choice voting, you know, open primaries, et cetera. So the folks that have done that particular opportunity have just gathered information and put it into a spreadsheet for us. That's very, very helpful. The third one, I actually thought this would be like way bigger than, than all the rest, which is just promoting Forward Party on Twitter. But you know, if we're being realistic, each time that you share something on Twitter or Facebook, et cetera, you're not naturally inclined to come in and say, I did this opportunity. But that's the type of very, very simple opportunity that can get you used to how the process works. You know, what, what is an opportunity? How do I fill one out? How do I get credit for the volunteer work that, that I'm doing? Um, next, and this, was, this is the one that I'm probably most excited about. We have verified volunteers in 49 out of 50 states. Um, and that's not to say that our, our last state doesn't have volunteers in it. They just haven't fully registered in the volunteer portal. And so uh, we will um, make, a, make a big effort to get West Virginia on board. Um, on the social media front, our biggest spot is, of course, Twitter. We are at almost 67,000 followers there. And then uh, Facebook, the Facebook main forward party page only has about 2,400 followers. So if you haven't already followed that page, please go ahead and do that right now. But the good news is we have over 200 different um, forward party pages across the country uh, that are, are starting to come online. And with those, those have over 100,000 people that already follow them. So. We're gonna be pushing all of those folks to follow the main page, of course. Instagram is probably our lowest. We just really haven't started to ramp that very much. So only 1,400 there, but you know, this is one simple action that we all can take is go and follow all those social accounts and then share those out to your friends, family, and anybody who might be interested. Um, so that's your data review for now. Uh, back, to, back to you, Blair. Off. I don't know about you guys, but knowing that we have active people in almost every single state, and I know West Virginia is active, we just need to get you guys in the portal. So if you're having a problem, anybody out there, you can email me directly, Blair at forwardparty.com. I can help you through the process and get you going wherever you are. Let's talk about four things that you can do right now, no matter where you are in this process of getting enrolled or taking action. So the first thing that we're going to recommend you do, which we've been saying this whole time, is sign up in the volunteer portal. This is our main base camp for knowing where you are, what you can do, what your skill sets are, it's how we'll plug you in and make sure that you can connect with your community. The number two thing you can do is really simple. You can actually just take a picture or a video wearing your Ford Party merch or holding a sign saying, I am Ford Party. We can actually show you what that looks like. One second, it's loading. <laughs> we have a few people who have already started the process. I see Carrie Ann in here. She's one of our Florida organizers. And we have Zach, I believe he's over in Nebraska. Zach, correct me if I'm wrong later. I think California actually. So yeah, take a picture of you and your merch, holding a sign, you can make your own, you can print one. She was really clever and used her mug. Whatever floats your boat, show support. And that way we can make some really cool media with it later. So it's a really simple ask that you can do with your camera phone or your computer. Um, if you're not as tech savvy, go old school. You can print it and send it to us if you really want to. <laughs> Hi, Nicole, love the mug. That was a great photo. So once you've done that, there's some other simple tasks you can do. 
We've already talked about sharing the forward party on your website or social media, wherever you can to get the word out. Today is a digital, digital society. So any of your channels, whether your favorite is TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, we're there. Please help share the word. Um, this is a, the way most people get their news nowadays. And the last thing is donate a dollar. We'll actually talk about this more in just a minute. Every single dollar is gonna count. And fundraising is a part of politics. We all know that. When I ran for Congress, it was my least favorite thing to ask for is your hard earned money. However, if we wanna support candidates in a nationwide political campaign, we're really gonna have to have um, funding. But what's actually more important is getting a high donor, individual donor count for the end of the year. So we've set a goal before January 1st of 22,000 individual donors. This really helps show how big we are and that we are a force to be reckoned with. And this will help us with filing with the FEC for party recognition in the future. So we have a link where you will go ahead and drop it in the chat, but again, um, this will be in the follow-up email and you can always go to forwardparty.com and just hit the donate button right there. And again, even if it's $1, um, everything counts. You don't have to be a recurring donor, but recurring donations are the best way to contribute. Um, but one time is definitely fine. So I wanna talk more about the action steps. So we talked just about four simple things you can do. Enroll in the volunteer portal, take a photo in your merch with a sign showing support, helping donate. There's lots of things you can do, but one thing that we're really looking for right now, and I encourage each of you to do today, is to consider being a forward community organizer. So let's talk just a minute about what this means. Communities could be a geographic or interest-based uh, community, but either way, you'll can coordinate with others to build a larger movement. So this could be your local town, it could be your um, church group, it could be your soccer club, uh, whatever group that you're a part of that you wanna help bring them into the fold, whatever works for you. So as a community organizer, you'll support um, basically all the people in your community. <laughs> You'll help get them plugged in, find out how you can meet up in real life or online, whether that's Zoom or a Facebook group or a Twitter channel. You're gonna be the liaison uh, between everybody in your community and the forward headquarters. You'll start accomplishing goals and getting the word out, those three steps we talked about earlier with adv advocacy and then taking action. You'll provide, as we called it, the URL to IRL toolkit. So what are the expectations? I kind of mentioned a few, but I wanted to go into this in a little bit more detail. You will be expected to actively coordinate and connect with people in your community. And we actually have a Discord that you can use as a tool also, which we'll get to later. Facebook is a great place to find people and bring them into the fold, as a lot of these groups have been established for two years or more in some cases. You'll be required to host regular meetings, take attendance, and take notes. We need to know what you're doing, who's coming, and how we can best support your group. And again, this could be online digitally on Zoom or whatever media you feel most comfortable with, or it could be in real life. We want you to definitely organize community events on the ground. And this could be an environmental cleanup. It could be a food drive. It could be just something fun for your group to do. It could be an educational event. But one that we really would like to see happen is voter registration drives. These are gonna be really important. It only makes sense to have more people vote in the upcoming elections. This is what Ford Party is all about, is getting people's voices heard, bringing them into the fold and making these electoral reforms. And last and almost most importantly is to have fun. We want this to be a really fun movement. You're gonna know your community best and how to get people involved. So um, we've given you a few ideas and we'll give you a few more later on. So um, now that we've talked about what a community organizer is and some of the asks, I wanted to bring a few of our community organizers on to tell you from firsthand experience what it's like to be a community organizer and give a little bit of an update. So Caesar is over in Nevada. He is our interim state lead out that way. And um, Caesar, correct me, I, I said it wrong again. Tell everybody how to say it the right way <laughs> in your update. Oh, Nevada? Yeah, just, you know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, do you want to go first? Sure, yeah, go ahead. All right, cool. Um, so I guess I'll give everybody just kind of like my journey in my state with uh, rank choose voting or final five voting. And hopefully you guys can kind of, you know, learn something from it. 
Uh, and then I'll, I'll give you guys an update. So um, after Yank dropped out in you know 2020, February, uh, me and some local organizers from the 2020 campaign, we organized and we created our own nonprofit, Move Nevada Forward. Um, and then, so like during the presidential, <clears throat> um, you know, I watched uh, like some podcasts with Andrew Yang and uh, eventually I landed uh, at Fair Vote and then I reached out to, uh, they have a map of all the states that have like, people working there. And so I reached out to uh, Doug Goodman, who's actually on this call. Thank you, uh, Doug, for uh, coming out. And so this man has been working on ranked choice voting for like years here in Nevada, right? Uh, but because of some things you'll you'll hear in a second, uh, he has some issues, you know, like not making it uh, into the, the ballot. Um, and so that's one thing that, that, you know, I suggest to you guys is there's probably some people already working on these issues. We just have to find them. You don't have to start from, from scratch. Uh, and that's kind of what we did. So another thing that we did is we reached out to, uh, Catherine Gale's nonprofit, the Institute for, for Political Innovation. Uh, if you recognize that name or is because she was on Yank Speaks and I found out about her because of Yank Speaks. So we reached out to her and she, like her organization organization actually helped us file the ballot question. And so, you know, uh, it has been a journey of just like getting the, the people with the right skills. And I think where, where the Yang Gang shines that we have the, the grassroots, we have the volunteers. And, you know, like in Nevada, that was uh, uh, one of the issues. Yes, we're actually also working with veterans for, veterans for political innovation. So that's another person, a group of people in our uh, coalition. So um, yeah, that's that's kind of right now. So to give you guys the update, so we submitted the ballot question, uh, but the uh, Democratic establishment, had, you know, they sued us. Well, not us like personally, but they sued the, the ballot question. So right now we're just kind of waiting. Um, and actually we have a meeting tomorrow to give some, some uh, more updates and more details. So if anyone's interested, uh, I'm gonna drop a link uh, and uh, you guys, if you guys want to like get some a taste of what a camp, uh, you know, ballot initiative is going to look like, like this is a good opportunity for you guys to learn. And we also could use volunteers to do a lot of uh, you know remote work, uh, things that, that can be done. So this will give you great experience uh, by the time you guys start your your ballot initiative. So uh, yeah, thank you for the opportunity, Blair. Appreciate it. Awesome. And you guys are doing great work out there. I really appreciate your dedication. Caesars has been at this for a long time. And like he mentioned, um, part of being a community organizer is knowing what groups are active in your area and getting people pulled into the fold and then being able to support the initiatives where we definitely have crossover to make that progress. So next up, I believe we have Carrie. Carrie is a longtime supporter of this movement and she has organized um, in Georgia in the past and she is currently taking the lead in Florida. Let's see. Carrie, you there? I am here. Um, yeah, so I just moved to Florida and I was super excited to get the forward party going. So I started looking into like ranked choice voting down here. And then I realized that this was kind of like a horse before the cart situation. So um, there's actually proposed legislation to ban ranked choice voting. So we, we have taken a step back. We can't even do a ballot initiative yet, right? We have to like get people on board with not banning it. Um, so I have become the outreach director for Rank My Vote Florida, and we definitely need volunteers to host events in their area. Um, the organization has spent a lot of time like lobbying and doing behind the scenes stuff in Tallahassee. But we know Yang Gang is great at grassroots organizing, so we're definitely looking for volunteers. You can go to rankmyvoteflorida, spelled out, .org, and we will definitely be, you know, supporting forward initiatives, and we have a group chat on Twitter for Move Florida Forward. If you want to join it, just hit me up, and uh, we can definitely get you plugged in. But yes, we definitely have to do some work in the RCV area before we can become an official party down here in the Sunshine State. Thanks for the update, Carrie. And we'll make sure uh, after this that we let you know how to contact um, our community organizers. If you're in one of these areas and you need to get connected, we'll get you guys plugged in. And like Carrie mentioned, some of these states, it's gonna go in a different order. 
Some states will have ballot initiatives, some states already have ranked choice voting or an alternative voting method. And it's really gonna be a unique situation. And again, you're gonna know your community best. That's why this is so important for you to step up and lead your area locally. So next up, we have Silas. He is a community organizer uh, based out of the DC area. Hey, can you all hear me? We can. Great. Um, so I recently got uh, named as this uh, lead for DC, which I'm really excited about. Um, I came to the movement. I had been a Yang supporter in the presidential, but then my, my brother actually ran for Congress down in Texas, where we're from. And Andrew had been a, an, um, a supporter of his, and, and so that's how I got connected. Um, it's been really fun. Um, I worked with Blair to just set up a plan for the first three months of the DC chapter, which is going to get off the ground. Our first event is a New Year's Day party coming up just now in um, two weeks on New Year's Day. Um, we got a plan to, to do about three months of building our infrastructure to get the party up and running, and actually a draft uh, organizational structure so we can uh, elect official leaders. What, meanwhile, again, um, more people to hear about what we're doing, getting uh, set up so we know what the uh, obstacles and the pathway is for some of the ballot initiatives, and also just getting to know each other and build our community here. So if anybody wants to um, be a part of it, things in D.C. and you're in the area, I dropped my name and um, email in the chat. It looks like chat is kind of running. Um, like it, it, There'll be 10 messages in there after you put anything in there, but um, I'm pretty easy to find because my name, Silas Kulkarni, is a very unusual name. And so um, very easy to find me in the base camp, or uh, you can just Google me. My email is just silaskukarni at gmail. So, and if, if you want to get involved and you can't find me, feel, please reach out to Blair, and then she'll get you connected to the DC group. Thanks for the update, Silas. And again, everybody, we'll make sure you get the links. The chat is moving quickly. Um, so we're going to send up a follow-up email to everybody on this call. So don't stress there. So last but not least, we have Ping in Iowa. And he's going to give you the update and the rundown of what's going on up in his area. Hi, everyone. My name is Ping from Iowa. Um, I, I guess I'll follow Caesar's uh, model here and give you a little background. Um, like, like Caesar, like Nevada, um, after Yang dropped out, um, the kind of Yang gang were trying to figure out what to do. Uh, and eventually they settled on becoming a nonprofit called Better Ballot Iowa, which with the, with the main mission being passing ranked choice voting um, across Iowa. Um, so they're a relatively new organization starting in March, um, but since then they've grown quite tremendously, um, having about 800 or so supporters, um, regular monthly meetings, weekly meetings, um, a variety of teams, um, and are growing up almost every every week, every month. Um, but uh, that group really complements uh, Forward Party. Um, so I decided to, to take the position uh, to be a community organizer. Um, and so there's a lot of things that need to be done uh, and kind of support groups that need to be fleshed out. Um, if you have any interest in building a group, uh, please reach out to me um, here at Iowa at forwardparty.com. Um, and if you want to start a new, uh, have a meeting um, in the next couple of weeks, I also dropped a doodle.com link uh, so we can schedule a meeting together. So happy to get things started. Great, awesome. Thank you, Ping. And again, we will get you guys all connected where you need to be. And if your community organizer isn't on this call today, that doesn't mean they don't exist or that you're not one of them. We just wanted to take a few people we knew were available who could give you some updates on what it's like to be a community organizer and how to get connected. So you're probably wondering, well, how do I become a community organizer or how do I get things moving in my state? So this is a little bit different than the four steps anybody can do, but it's really pretty simple. I think anybody could do it. It just takes the initiative. So the first step would be, again, make sure you're enrolled in our volunteer portal, volunteer.forwardparty.com. Sign up and make sure you have your qualification signed, and then you can go to your opportunities. In there, you'll find one called Sign Up to Become a Community Organizer. And again, we will send you these links in the follow-up email. The first thing you have to do is host a meeting and take attendance. So we have an initial goal of 1,000 active volunteers per state. This would really send the, the establishment a message that we are serious. We are ready to take action. Um, so part of hosting your meeting is finding people and getting them enrolled also in the volunteer portal. A few things that you can do during your meeting is make some, some simple lists. These could be local orgs and groups that you want to collaborate with, like some of our community organizers just talked about. 
You can help find candidates. We're currently focused on the federal races at this point, but once you have an established group in a state, that actually gives us even more argument and reason to get involved in smaller down ballot races. So I would leave that on your shoulders to try to really develop a robust team so that we can get active on the more local races. And another thing you can do is think of ideas for your local community that you want to host. Again, you're going to know your area best and what's going to work. Um, obviously, we don't want to send you out in the snow if you live in Alaska, things like that. And obviously, Florida weather is going to be different. You guys get the point. Number three would be host a voter registration event. So again, this is really important. This one actually helps us with party recognition as well as just good to get people um, registered to vote so that their voices can be heard. Step four is to try to find someone to design a logo for your state. Now, we understand that not every group is gonna have a graphic artist. Just email me and say, hey, we really need help getting a logo set up. And then once you do, we can actually go ahead and put your merch on our store. I'm gonna give a huge shout out to Colorado here because they were ready to roll. So we actually have Colorado's um, a t-shirt and a long sleeve available with their state logo on it. Um, so that's actually really awesome. Thank you, Colorado. That's a big shout out to Oliver out that way. He's the lead community organizer at this time. And then step five is to help us hit that 22,000 uh, individual donors goal before the end of the year. Again, this is really important. Obviously we need money, but this is more about people. It takes strength and numbers to really show power. And that is part of organizing. Uh, so I wanted to touch on what is a voter registration drive. I've told you how important it is and that we need you to do them, but not necessarily how. So I'm going to include this information again in the follow-up email, but it's really important for us to help turn out the vote and to file eventually for our party recognition. We definitely wanna do this everywhere that you, that you can. Um, there's a few things that you need to know here. Every state has different rules and regulations. So you have to actually go to this link, which we are gonna give you, and find out what those specific rules are for your state so that you can start your guide. Uh, we also have a link for you to be able to sign up and let us know where you're going to host your drive and when and anything you need for support. And then you can also um, request any supplies you need there as well. Okay, so I want to give a huge shout out to Caesar, Nick, and Jake. They've been helping with the digital community and we are ready to launch our Discord. So obviously there is a ton of channels for people to get involved, but Discord is a very good tool for community building. It's a little bit different. It's not super corporate. It's really fun and creative. And I think a lot of you will enjoy it. So we're gonna drop the link to the Discord. And then again, it'll be in the follow-up email. Thank you guys so much for helping put this together. Okay, the forward party handbook. This is something that will be an incredibly useful tool for anybody. So I gave you so much information today. This is somewhere where you can refer back to, find specifics, details, further information, ideas, best practices, essentially anything you can think of. You wanna know what forward party's mission is? It's in the handbook. You wanna know how to become a community organizer? It'll be in the handbook. Voter registration drives, how to host tabling events, everything you need to know. Consider this a living document that we are going to continuously update and improve. But for now, it's a really good starting point, 17 pages long. I think that's a good starting point <laughs> for you guys to really find the resources and tools you need to be successful. So there's a few things I wanted to do before we wrap up. And we do have a video that was made by the volunteers that we're going to show after this. Um, but we wanted to drop a few links to you. So coming up on January 12th, 3 p.m. Eastern is the open primary Zoom event. And Andrew is a guest speaker here. This is a great org, again, that aligns with the work we're doing that we really want to support. Um, and it'll be a great call to hear more about Forward Party. So we're going to have their link that you can go sign up for that. And then we have our registration link ready for January's meeting. So it's towards the end of the month and we're gonna have a lot more updates then that gives everybody time after the holidays to really get moving. And I will take this time to say, please have a happy and safe holiday. I hope you all get to spend it with your friends and family. 
And to make it fun, <laughs> we all know how holidays can be. We have a printable rank choice voting ballot for you. So you could use this for presents or Christmas movies or rate grandma's pies. However makes sense for you, we hope you'll be able to use it. These are gonna be found in the drive. And again, we'll give you the link. You can print them out and write in your own topics and teach your family how to use rank choice voting. And they are Christmas themed, so it's pretty fun. <laughs> So we're gonna send out that follow-up link, um, hopefully by tonight to all of you with all these important details. And I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up and give you guys our volunteer made video. And I hope it brings you some inspiration and know that we appreciate you all so much. And again, please feel free to reach out to me at any point if you're ready to step up and be a community organizer or you need help along the way or just to get enrolled into the portal. It's Blair, B-L-A-I-R at forwardparty.com. And if I could stress anything to you that, again, this movement, it starts with you. You have the power to step up and take action and really bring your community into the fold to see the changes that we want in American politics. Thank you all for coming on and we're gonna go ahead and play our video for you. First, you can join the Ford Party if you're a registered Democrat or a registered Republican or an independent. Uh, this is a nonpartisan, tripartisan movement to try and bring the country back together. Well, given your experience with ranked choice voting in New York, what do you believe are the benefits to that system? How do you feel the process, along with open primaries, could help solve what you refer to as a broken system in America? Even in New York City, Elaine, 900,000 New Yorkers voted, uh, but it shut out independents and Republicans from that Democratic primary, which we all know determined who the next mayor is going to be. We need to include people from every political perspective, and right now closed party primaries are distorting the incentives for our elected leaders, where they need to placate and please the 10 percent most extreme partisans on either side, which is one reason why it's not working at all. We can see that it's becoming more and more polarized and not much is getting done. So the shift to a combination of open primaries and ranked choice voting will realign our representatives' incentives around trying to deliver for 51 percent of us, which is the way it should be, as opposed to just pleasing the 10 to 20 percent most extreme partisans on either side. I'm motivated by trying to make positive things happen for our people. And I don't think we have a limit, unlimited time. I think you got to go fast. One of the things that we see from up here is that the, the earth is not a stagnant place. It continues to change. I have been thinking a lot about this moment back on earth and wondering with so much turmoil here and you looking down on all of it from such a distance, what that feels like to look down on a planet that's truly in the midst of some really challenging, tumultuous times. Well, it certainly is challenging uh, to hear either by uh, second hand or when we get the uh, opportunity to see some uh, news up here. Uh, all the turmoil that's going on, the challenges with the pandemic and the strife in the cities and, and all the different challenges that people are going through on a day-to-day -day basis. It's, it, it is, you know, emotionally, it does take a toll on us, certainly. And I think the other thing that, that really resonates with me personally is just when you look out the window, when you see the planet below, you don't see borders, you don't see the strife, you see this beautiful planet that we need to take care of because I think if you get the chance to look out the window from space and look back on our planet, it will change you. It will change you for the better, and you'll realize that this is one big world rather than all these different little countries or cities or factions that we have uh, on the planet. And I, th I think it will make it a better place. We are Forward Party. And we are going to do our best to build the most diverse and inclusive team of Americans ever seen in United States politics. We are united by the vision of humanity first. By promoting our policies and vision, we intend to create a strong, viable option for people tired of the status quo. In order to do that, we need to start and grow local teams throughout every state 
that will promote the forward party not just online, but in real life. We are going to take these policies to every front door in our neighborhoods, main streets of our towns, every market square, and right up to the capital steps of every state. And we won't stop there. We'll take these policies right into the corridors of Washington, D.C. Every state and every locality matters. It starts with you. My mission is to change the process to open primaries and ranked choice voting so that every legislator has to try and appeal to a majority of us and not the folks on either extreme. I don't know about you guys, but that really inspires me. We're gonna take these again to our neighbors, door to door and all the way up to the steps of Washington DC and into the White House. That's how big we are gonna go. So let's move this forward. Thank you all again for being here. I'm gonna send you guys a follow-up email and I can't wait to see what we do next. Again, have a great weekend, enjoy the holidays and we'll talk to you soon.